I think Gaijin is bottling one of the biggest opportunities that's been in front of them in a while. And I mean bottling it harder than Arsenal bottled the Premier League this year. With that being said, it's been really interesting the last couple weeks to kind of watch all the events unfold between economy changes, the reneging on Gaijin's part, the community's response with review bombing, the apologies, all that kind of stuff. It's been absolutely fascinating to me. This is the second video in a two-part video series in which I'm explaining my opinions and thoughts regarding the current War Thunder controversy. First video talked about the free-to-play business model and how closely War Thunder follows that business model. If you haven't seen that video, look at the top right of your screen right now. Go check it out and then hop back over here. This video will be broken up into two parts. The first part is why I think Gaijin is failing to seize a massive opportunity in front of it. And the second part is going to be my opinions and thoughts regarding the community and theories of communication on why Gaijin doesn't publicly acknowledge the community at all. Let's get into it. Just like I did in the previous video, I want to mention here that my goal is to be as independent as possible with both my opinions and thoughts because I don't want to serve as an echo chamber for either Gaijin or the player base. Thank you so much. I want to point to probably War Thunder's biggest competitor, at least in terms of player base, than any other title out there, and that is World of Tanks. And although most of us can agree that while these two games aren't necessarily direct competitors because the gameplay is entirely different, these titles both engage in World War II and post-tank combat, which tends to tickle the itch of a lot of us history, military, vehicle buffs that are out there. So if we're looking to play a game that satisfies that itch, we're probably turning to either of these two. Now, a while back in March, World of Tanks announced update 1.20.1, which basically overhauled the entire crew system. If you're not familiar with the situation, one of the most important aspects of World of Tanks is the crew system and the abilities that you can unlock on your crew members to give you edges in battle. This new proposed crew system would make some perks less relevant it would make some even more relevant. It would give even bigger buffs to certain crew skills that are already there. Generally speaking, it would make it harder and harder for free to play players to unlock the max amount of crew skills versus someone who'd be willing to fork out some real money. Some of the game's biggest content creators went on YouTube, made a bunch of videos talking about how they potentially see that this is the end of World of Tanks and that Wargaming was trying to kill the game and that some of them even argued that they could not even support new players getting into the game right now because it'd be almost impossible to get to the same level as players who have been playing for years. After the outrage, a couple weeks go by, Wargaming announced that 1.20.1, the system will remain unchanged and they ended up backtracking because they realized how big of a mistake they were making. Who knows what they plan on doing in the future, but at least for now, there was somehow a stay of execution. You might be asking to yourself, how does this relate to War Thunder? If you go back to what I said earlier, and that War Thunder and World of Tanks are spiritual competitors, if I'm Gaijin and I'm sitting in my office and I'm seeing all of this unfold, why on God's green earth would you potentially make the same decisions regarding your own game? Now, if we look at War Thunder's own community, based on what happened after the most current economy changes, there was a multitude of players publicly on reviews, the War Thunder Reddit, whatever you think of virtue signaling, basically stating that they were uninstalling the game, they were moving on, they couldn't support the company anymore. And of course, what you see is only a fraction, but you can't help but believe that that number was probably significantly higher because most people probably aren't gonna get online and tell everyone how they're quitting because they don't care. They're just gonna quit, move on. So after Wargaming proposed these changes at 1.20.1, .1, you could only imagine that the same sort of effect happened inside of the World of Tanks community. Tons of players threatening to quit the game. And this was in March, early April. So if I'm Gaijin, why am I not doing everything in my power to lure those players to my game? War Thunder currently has the most amount of registered accounts and active players than it has in its history. And this could have been their chance to seize on a competitor making a series of horrible mistakes. Companies want to milk their players dry, try to make the most amount of money as possible. I'm having a hard time of understanding why squeezing everything they possibly can out of their current player base in their minds would make them more money than keeping things the way they are or making them slightly easier to grind, but you're bringing in tens of thousands of potential new players over the course of years. 
in my eyes, you kill two birds with one stone, right? You're guaranteeing the success of your game for the next five years at minimum, based on all the new players that are jumping ship and coming over to War Thunder. But for the percentage of players out of those that wish to contribute financially for premium account, premium vehicles, all that kind of stuff, you're also making a profit on that too. If I charge two players 50 bucks to make $100, those two players might be a little bit more agitated with me because I charged them more. But if I can charge less, let's say $20 a player, but that brings in five, I made the same amount of money. However, my players are probably gonna be a little bit more content and happy with me and probably stay on the game for longer. Maybe even recommend it. I just don't understand why they wouldn't be trying to seize on that fractured relationship and try and pull those players to War Thunder. For the last part of this video, I kind of want to talk about the overall community that I've seen over the last couple weeks. Undoubtedly, there's definitely some social issues at play with the current situation going on as well. Free to play players who possibly don't have enough money to be able to buy anything in the game, therefore they feel cheated by this big organization maximizing profit over their enjoyment. There's players who automatically assume certain things about the company just because of where they're from or where they're based. I'm a big believer in that our own perception of things is based on our own experiences. So if we have bad experiences with some company in real life, we tend to think that all companies operate a certain way. I'm not here to argue who's right and who's wrong. Just stating facts. Community went on a review bombing tirade, which totally got the attention of Gaijin so much so that they had to make a paragraph dedicated specifically to it. I don't have a problem admitting it myself, but I personally believe that review bombing does more damage long term than it achieves in the short term because just like any book we judge a book by its cover we might look at the cover we'll read the little intro or the summary on the back and then we'll decide if we want to read it or not well if a new player sees all the bad reviews current state of the game chances are they're probably not going to pick up the game and while there's definitely some players out there who probably think that's a good thing and they feel like they're being heroic by saving new players the trouble from joining into a game run by an atrocious company or whatever you guys want to call it. I just think that long term, both the company and the community should be doing everything in its power to try and keep getting new players in the game. Because there's always going to be burnout, there's always going to be players leaving the game, and we always need new players to come in and take their places. So I think if you couple an exodus of current players to leave the game, but also review bombing and preventing new players from joining the game, I do think in the short term that you're achieving what you want as you're getting Gaijin's attention, but I think in the long term you hurt the game because new players potentially aren't going to come on that would be willing to spend money. There's a real delicate balance that needs to be found because I think at the end of the day we all want more players coming to the game because we all want the game to keep going on. I tried to do some digging online to find Gaijin's revenue and the closest figure I found, I found a couple of numbers, but they were all within that 21 to 23 million range per year. So we'll cut it in half and say 22. So if Gaijin makes 22 million a year, now that is revenue, means that is the number before all of the expenses come out. So staff wages, technology. So if $22 million is only coming from 20% of the player base, while 80% of the player base commits nothing, I definitely think they're gonna focus on making content for those 20% because that's guaranteed income. Because based on the data that we learned earlier, that only between one and 5% of players make the jump from free to play to pay. There's many free to play players out there who would be paying players if they could afford to, but they can't. So therefore they feel cheated by the players that can't afford to spend money on the game. And while I totally sympathize with that position, I do think it's unrealistic to assume and demand a company make business decisions that cater towards a population that isn't guaranteed income versus the population that is guaranteed income because guaranteed income basically confirms the future and longevity of the title. The last thing in terms of community that I wanna talk about is I've been seeing the thread quite a bit of how Gaijin doesn't listen to us. Now call me crazy, but I don't necessarily think that is entirely true. And I know some of you are probably sitting there, as I said that, probably burst out laughing because if they were listening to us, they wouldn't be making 
all of these bonehead changes. And I wanna reference a situation that happened at Sega and Creative Assembly with Warhammer 3 a few months back. Initially, Creative Assembly wasn't gonna release Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires for everybody. You had to own all three Warhammer titles to get access. Well, a bunch of players and content creators got together and started a petition to make it free for everybody. And while it didn't look like it was gaining a lot of traction, eventually Creative Assembly came around and agreed to that. However, Creative Assembly never publicly came out and stated that their decision was because of the petition. And the reason for that is if they came out and publicly cited the petition, they would have legitimized that petition, gave a legitimate platform to the players. Therefore, if the players ever wanted to band together in the future, all they would have to do is start another petition because Creative Assembly has now set a precedent that they would listen to petitions. I think Gaijin is doing the same thing. They're never going to publicly acknowledge any sort of suggestion from their survey. They're never going to mention the War Thunder Reddit. They're never gonna mention the official forums. Even though those are places where a lot of good ideas and bad ones are tossed around, they're never gonna mention them because they're never gonna wanna legitimize those platforms and potentially set themselves up to be taken hostage by the player base. Some of you might be laughing at that, be like, Ronick, what are you talking about? I personally think the fact that Gaijin has somewhat reneged or at least delayed these decisions is a massive win for the player base at all. Because since Gaijin reversed its course based on the review bombing, that now signals to the player base that if they ever want to get something that they want or they want to get something removed, all they have to do is review bomb. So the fact that Gaijin acknowledged that they made these decisions following a review bomb and specifically mentioned it on their website, to me, it's like a serious shift of power to the player base. And up to this point, they've never publicly acknowledged any sort of forum or any sort of player or anything like that because they've never wanted to give that level of power to the player base before. Because then you're gonna have a bunch of people who don't financially contribute to the game, who don't have development degrees, who don't have business degrees. You don't wanna give people like that a power in a game's development. In conclusion, I just think it's super important that we all as players, before we make any massive rash decisions about anything and how we choose to approach something we don't like within the game that we love, we take a step back and we look at everything. Why does Gaijin make the decisions they make? What is their goal? What is their purpose? And also, before the player base decides to take any action to combat said choices and decisions, that we be mindful of the potential long-term effects that I think it can have on the game that the players cause. Gaijin is operating no differently than any soda company, any gambling company, any casino, any snack food company. And while it's really easy for us to just sit here and point at them and tell them how horrible they are, and how their practices are unethical. Even if that's true, I really caution everybody to avoid that stance because would we make the same decisions if we were in positions of power of companies? Would we not be tempted to try and make as much money as possible? I think if anyone who isn't a business owner who says they wouldn't try to maximize profit, I'd probably laugh and say, yeah, okay, bro. There's no way to know until you're in a position like that. All of the opinions inside of this video were my own. Everyone's always a tough guy on the internet when they're guarded by a username. And I'm out here on YouTube, my username. Y'all know who I am. I'm not afraid to hide. I'm not afraid to share my opinions. So I'm just really wanna make sure that we can all come together and sometimes have an honest conversation because in today's world, it's so easy to not be able to do that. And that just really upsets me. So I hope y'all at least learned something, thought the video was insightful. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. If you enjoyed the video today, please consider hitting that like, comment, and sub button. I appreciate your support, as always, everybody on the channel. It just means so much to me. I can't believe we hit a 1,000 subs. Don't worry. The video that my wife and I are working on is going to be fantastic. I can't wait to get it out to y'all. Stay tuned, and I'll see y'all in the next one.